I'm Raymond Grace, president and founder of the Raymond Grace Foundation, and I want to thank you for joining me today here. Uh, and I also want to thank Ozark Research Institute for inviting me, giving me this opportunity to talk to you. So we're going to enjoy. I've been working with them since about 96, and we've had a very good working relationship all these years. So really glad to be back with them and you today on this. Uh, back in uh, around the turn of the century, 98, 99, somewhere in that uh, time, I was speaking at ORI on energy. And I saw the energy was changing at the time, but I really didn't know how to identify it. And I had some kind of a little scale that I went by that I could measure energy, and I could see that it was increasing. So I uh, shared what I thought I knew at the time with folks, and at the time it was fairly new information. Now that information is at least 22 years old, and energy is still increasing at a much more rapid rate than it did back then. Now, uh, it appears that we are able to accomplish far more now than we could then. And the reason why, I believe, is because we have more energy. So I want to talk to you a little about that. We also have more reasons to use that energy now because we have problems now that we didn't have then. And I don't have to tell you about this. You know it. You live it every day. You're living in a world that did not exist last year. So uh, it really uh, affects an awfully lot of people uh, negatively. And I know this because of all the folks that write me asking for help. So what I'd like to do is cover a technique that I have come up with that most anybody can use. If you're smart enough to have a driver's license, you can probably use this information. So uh, I want to uh, start out with saying I've created something, and I just call it a package. Now, whenever you create something that hasn't been created before, you need to give it a name. Well, what I've found is that most people think that their problems are unique uh, and they're just different than everybody else in the world. Well, that's just not true. Uh, I found that most people all around the world have very similar problems. Yeah, there's some differences, but overall, there's a lot of similarity. So I put together something that I call a problem package that can be addressed uh, very simply. I'm going to explain it to you once I explain it, you don't need to go over it in detail, because to go over it in detail takes quite a few words and a bit of time. I'm actually going to put into this film the energy that I would use if I were working with you directly, either by phone or email or Skype or whatever, and uh, give you something today that's going to make it worthwhile for you to, to watch this. Among the things that I have come up with, there's about seven of them, and you can add more if you like. But the first thing I want to uh, do here is to neutralize the negative effect of the surrounding area upon you folks, because folk, energy is contagious. And most all the things that I'm going to mention here, and probably, well, actually all of them, are contagious. They affect you. Distance doesn't really seem to be a factor. Uh, I find that what is affecting people maybe in one country will affect people in another country, especially if you have some type of connection with them, uh, such as your heritage, race, or whatever. So I even found someone in France that was being affected by what was happening to a group of people in New York simply because they were of the same heritage. They didn't know one another, but the energy was contagious all the way across the ocean. That really got my attention. So I think, okay, with all of the fear, uncertainty, uh, panic, wondering how is he going to buy groceries, pay the rent, all this, this creates a tremendous amount of energy because we got a lot of people on this planet. Well, this energy can and does affect you folks. So the first thing I want to do is neutralize the negative effect of the surrounding area. Now, if you live out in the mountains here like I do, that's not a problem. These trees out here really don't cause me a problem. However, if you live in a large city, especially if you've got a real high crime rate, uh, all of the worry, uh, negativity, and 
emotions of other people are going to have a, an effect upon you. So that's what I'm doing right now is, and the pendulum spins in a counterclockwise direction, I am neutralizing the negative effect of the surrounding area upon you. The next thing is the mass consciousness of people. We have more people on this planet now than we've had before, and everybody has the ability to emit energy, and they do. Unfortunately, most of it is of a negative nature. Okay, if you doubt that you are affected, you just stop and think a minute. If you're sitting in a group of friends and everybody's laughing and talking and having a good time, you're going to feel pretty good. If you're sitting around a bunch of people bitching, whining, and complaining, uh, they're going to drag you down. So that's why I say energy is contagious. Okay, so I want to neutralize the negative effect of the mass consciousness of people upon you. How far out will this go? Well, I used to say it would go out about eight miles, but after I found it was affecting people all across the Atlantic Ocean, I decided, well, maybe it don't have a limit. I don't really know. So I don't even try to measure it anymore. All right. So what I've done here, and I'm being real slow about doing this, I want to make sure you understand it. I have just neutralized the negative effect of the mass consciousness of people upon you. Now, there's something else that I'm not really going to try to explain very much because I don't know a lot about it, but it's called Schumann Resonance, and that's spelled S-C-H-U-M-A-N-N, -N, Schumann Resonance. And that is, as near as I understand it, a vibration of the earth. You can actually get an app on your phone showing what the Schumann Resonance is on any given day. Well, I can always tell when it goes up because I get more mail and more calls. Why? Because people go kind of kind of loco then, and uh, they know something's wrong, they don't know what, so they contact me. Well, what I found was that I can neutralize the negative effect of human resonance upon these folks, and they will feel better, the majority of them will, almost immediately. Not only that, I will measure the energy, and the energy will go up. Well, what does this tell me? It tells me that it works. Uh, the folks I work on think it works. That's why they keep getting in contact with me. All right? So the fact that you and I can use our minds and change the effect of a natural phenomenon upon us tells me quite a bit. We're, we're pretty powerful, more than we thought we were. Well, why can we do this? Well, we had more energy now to do it with than we had 20 years ago. All right, the next thing I want to neutralize upon you folks is something that so many of you have written me about, and I don't know much about it, but it's called 5G. And again, I have every reason to believe that we can neutralize the negative effect of any type of electronics upon us. Now, I don't even speak the language real well on all these technical things. But I remember years ago, I was working with uh, Bill Northern, who at the time was the president of the American Dowsers. And he had a group that he was uh, teaching, and some of you may have hold, uh, heard me tell this story before. But Bill took us all out there to find a noxious energy zone uh, in, his, in his front yard. And we found it, but we didn't know what caused it. So he said, well, let me show you. And he pointed across the road at a transformer on a light pole. And I thought, well, that's interesting. So about an hour later, I said, Bill, let's get the group together and go out here and uh, find that noxious energy zone again. He said, oh, we've already found it. I said, yeah, but let's go find it again. He said, no, you take the group out there and find it. Well, I took the group of folks out there, and nobody could find it. Well, here come Bill with his doubting rod. said, I'll show you where it is. Well, he couldn't find it either. And he asked me, what did you do with it? All I did was neutralize the negative effect of the transformer. That's all. So don't complicate this stuff, folks. It's pretty simple. So I figured, well, if I could neutralize the negative effect of a transformer, I could neutralize 5G. And so far, it seems to work. The next thing is affecting you folks that, have, that live near large cities, and that's riots. See, people are going crazy. Uh, and a riot has a lot of energy. The only thing is, it's not a good energy. And that energy can go out a long ways. So I thought, well, we better throw that in there and neutralize negative effects of riots upon all you folks that live in cities. Now, if you're on a cattle ranch in Wyoming or a wheat uh, field in Kansas, you probably don't have a problem with that. But if you live in large cities, uh, you, you may have a problem with it. So 
Uh, I just wanted to try to get it across to you. You really have the ability to change the energy of rights. So uh, you might want to put it to use. Uh, the next thing is uh, radiation. Now, I don't know a lot about radiation, but I started doing an experiment recently about it, and I found out that I could neutralize the negative effect of radiation on somebody when I was in a phone conversation, and they could feel an improvement uh, in, in their body, feel a difference, and their energy went up. So I thought I'd better add that on there. And the next one is what you've all dealt with is this coronavirus. So I thought, well, what if we uh, could neutralize negative effect of that virus and all of the negative emotions attached to it? That's where the real problem seems to be. So I found out we could do that. So I put all this stuff together, I think it's seven items there, and I called it a problem package. So to make this easy for you, every morning when you get up, if you are a dowser, just use your dowsing to neutralize Raymond's problem package upon you and your home and your family. And I suppose you can expand as far as you believe you can. That's usually the way it works. Or if you are not a dowser and you're, not, you're having a little difficulty with it and you don't have a lot of confidence, all you really need to do is just give thanks for it. Don't ever ask for anything, folks, because if you ask for something, you're saying, I don't have it. If you give thanks for something, you're saying you do have it. You are affirming that you already have it, and it works. So you can just give thanks for neutralizing Raymond's problem package upon you, your family, and your home. Now, this is about as simple as I could possibly make this. So don't, it'd be hard to misunderstand, I think. So you folks go ahead and put it to use. See what happens. Okay, folks, that was really the speech I wanted to make for this conference. And I've got about six minutes left, so let me give you another one. Now, this sounds like a strange story, and it is, but I don't have any normal stories. Right? They're all strange. Let's go back in time, uh, uh, many years. My dad uh, uh, had a very troublesome left knee that caused him an awful lot of pain and problems uh, for years, up until the time he died. Well, after he died, that problem came to me. Now, my old buddy Chief Two Trees, an old Cherokee Indian man I used to hang out with a lot, good friends, he said the same thing happened to him when his dad passed on. His dad problems came to him. Well, apparently that's what happened to me. I dealt with it off and on for 28 years. And about a year and a half ago, I guess this was around January of 2019, I got to thinking, it's time to bring this stuff to a screeching halt. So I decided I would rebuild my left knee. Now, I, it, it gave me some pain uh, sometimes, not a lot, but some, and I uh, was having a little trouble walking at times, but overall I was still going. I still run chainsaws, drive a tractor, uh, do farm work. Uh, I'm older than dirt, but I'm still going pretty strong. So I decided I'm going to build me a new knee. Well, I had no clue what I had just done to myself. The next morning, I had to get a cane to get to the kitchen. I could not walk without a cane. I think, well, I hadn't planned this. But I went ahead and put a cane in the Jeep with me, take it wherever I'd go. If I got out to go to the grocery store, I had to walk with a cane. But I was determined to get better. As time went on, I used the cane less and less. All right, right now I'm filming this on the latter part of August. And I haven't used a cane for well over a year. I'm walking better now than I've ever walked. There was a doctor friend of mine in class the other day. I hadn't seen her for a year. She said, last year you were limping. You're not limping now. I said, no. I grew myself a new knee. It's working fine. And you say, how did I do that? I did it with intent. See, folks are always asking me, how did you do various things? And the answer is always the same. I did it with intent. So I learned to use my mind. And... Um, Harold McCoy had a, a, a saying, it was his really philosophy, he called it the power of thought. Well, it's the same thing as what I'm saying, intent, we were saying the same thing, just may have used different words. But what I learned later that I think I really used was I was watching a video and the doctor or scientist that was explaining it was talking about DNA. 
And he said, we only know of about 5% of the DNA in a human body. And the rest of it we call junk DNA. Well, I thought about that for a moment, and I said, I don't believe the Creator created junk. So I renamed it, and I called it unknown DNA. Apparently, what I did was I used that unknown DNA to build a new need. I just thought I would tell you about that, and if you ask me, well, how did you know you could do that? I didn't. Uh, what I've got going for me that most people don't is, I don't know I can't. So... You might want to adapt that philosophy. You can do a lot more with it. So I want to thank you for joining me. Thank ORI for inviting me. And you all have a good rest of the conference.